Hello and welcome to another How to Code Well web chat. My name is Peter Fisher. Today we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence and what it means for web developers. Now artificial intelligence is something that I've wanted to talk about for a long time. It's so exciting to know, you know, that we're moving into artificial intelligence now and you know, it's touching so many parts of our lives. And I do think that artificial intelligence is going to alter web development in years to come. So I'm going to give away some of my predictions as well. Now, in a previous video I did, I I was asked to do uh, a talk on artificial intelligence, maybe do a video on the side effects of artificial intelligence. Clearly, you have been hit by an AI bug. This um, comment from 39.co.uk was a comment on my uh, micro channel is demonetized video. So yes, artificial intelligence has hit me um, quite recently with my channel because uh, a couple of my videos, I think two now, have been marked as demonetized. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. I'm not going to too harp too much onto that. But artificial intelligence is the subject of today's talk. So where do I think artificial intelligence is going to take us? Well, for one, I think it's going to alter the way we do agile. And, you know, hear me out, hear me out. I've, I went to a talk... Uh, I think about three months ago-ish, and it was a, a great talk about Agile, and it was a great talk about the evolution of project management, going from Waterfall and be, and before that all the way to uh, where it might go in the future. And part of that talk was artificial intelligence. And the more I, I listened, the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. Think of all the times that could be spent, could be better, more efficiently spent if someone else or something else was able to collate some information and just give it to to someone to read. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about all of the stand-up meetings that we have to do. All of the, what did you do yesterday? What did you do today? What do you plan to do tomorrow? And what's preventing you? That kind of thing. Those questions that get constantly asked, which is, they're good questions to have. But, you know, there is, there is a danger of just being in those stand-up meetings and ensuring that you've got something to say, regardless of whether the thing that you have to say is is a good thing, right? Or gives any benefit to anyone else who's listening. Um, you, sometimes it can be like, oh, well, the person before me said four things, so I, I, I need to make sure that I've got four or, or five things to say. That kind of thing, you know, where, where, it's, where, where it's just a numbers game rather than actually benefiting you or anyone else who's listening. Well, the information is obviously a sharing collaboration tool, a, a sort of exercise, right? Because everyone is 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 listening to your little, you know, ten, uh, two minute talk on what it is that you you're trying to achieve. Well, that information can be pulled out from artificial intelligence. If there was something that was monitoring the project constantly, in a sort of a a learning way, so it was learning the project as it was evolving. If for, if there was this thing that you could just pump in all of the uh, the tasks, all of the project requirements and all of that stuff, and then it was aware of when the sprints were being finished, aware of when the tasks were being finished, aware of what the comments were, all of those kind of things, and it could tag and categorize everything in a kind of an ordered way, and it was evolving and learning as the project was was, was moving on. If it could work out what the difference is between scope creep um, and just general sort of project requirements, that kind of thing, then you would ask that machine, that, that artificial intelligence thing, you would ask that, how well is the project going? What did that developer do yesterday? What is he trying to do today? What's on his schedule? And, and, and so forth. What was his, on his schedule yesterday and did he do it? That kind of thing, right? So... You, you can abstract out all of the information that the team offer in a scrum, right, to this thing, to this, this uh, artificial intelligence machine that can have so much access to all of this stuff. And it can be wired into, say, I don't know, Jira or Trello or whatever tool that you use. And it can be used for collaboration. It could be used for all sorts of things that just general paperwork that you have to do when you're doing a project you know that kind of thing 
And I think that that would certainly alleviate some of the problems Agile has um, or that I've witnessed. And it w can also do so much more. So it could, it could uh, produce graphs and charts and reports about the project uh, and all of that. And you could get it learning on one thing and then you, you could like make that as a template for the next project and so forth. And then after that, you could use that tool, that artificial intelligence tool, to dig into the project and find out where, the, where it slowed down, where it sped up, that kind of thing. So I think that's going to be really great. That, that was something that was sort of mentioned in the talk. And the talk uh, used or, or sort of packaged that up in sort of a Slack chatbot kind of way. So you would ask a, a Slack a question and it would respond with with the answer so you would ask slack a question about the project and then it would respond with an answer those kind of things and you you can kind of see this moving on into different areas with these sort of chat-esque bots where it you don't necessarily need to be a programmer anymore in order to spin up a bunch of servers because if you had a a, a bunch of scripts that were listening to a bot questions being asked to a bot and then it would go off and perform these very complicated provisioning of servers or spinning up of whatever, then, you know, that that is quite a, an intelligent thing to do. I mean, you can see that with sort of just spinning up games machines and stuff like that. So you would ask, ask um, to start a game, and then that would go off and start something in a serverless manner. Maybe it's a game engine or something, um, just for that one user's instance. And then you can kind of evolve that in, in, in your thinking and have like multiple chatbots communicating to each other in sort of like this sort of hive mind type manner, um, which is which is sort of A, terrifying, but B, really interesting. Uh, how, you know, that the information is going to be shared between artificial intelligent bots and stuff. Uh, and especially with the serverless um, computing where things can just, you know, be randomly span up or not randomly, but they can be spun up um, on the fly without having to actually invest in lots of hardware and, and infrastructure and stuff like that. You don't need to do that anymore. You can just create yourself a function, a Lambda function, um, that does a thing, and you could, ha you could chain those things together. So, yeah, I do think that artificial intelligence, and I know I've, I've lent on lots of things already, is going to evolve and develop, but... The thing is that we have to remember that when it starts out, it's really stupid. Okay, so it's a it's just basically like a black box. You can think of it like a kid, right? A child. So a, a baby is being born, and the, it doesn't know how to talk. It doesn't know how to write. It doesn't know how to read. But as soon as you teach it how to how to read, it will go off and read books, right? So it will improve itself. Which I I going back to the, this demonetization thing. I think we're seeing a bunch of growing pains personally. I I mean I'm I was and as the video were mentions I was extremely annoyed that my uh, videos were being demonetized for no apparent reason. But they were quickly after about 72 hours both of them were monetized again. And I and I believe that that was a growing pains. That was that was the bot thinking yeah i should demonetize that and then humans were saying no you don't demonetize that and that's how it was evolving basically the youtube have got this black box of artificial intelligence and they are training it and teaching it and making it evolve and grow so i don't think that we're going to see uh these problems this time next year we'll probably be seeing an awful lot of other things but you know I, I think this is a growing thing. And that's the th point I want to make with artificial intelligence. The first time you use it, it's not going to be as good as when you use it, say, in three months' time, right? Because it 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 is very vanilla to begin with, and then it progresses and gets better and so forth. Um, and because it has experience and learning and understanding of what information it previously had. So... Going back to the agile thing, you could you could almost see it like you know you, after what the first project is done, you use that as a template for the next project, right? So now it knows what reports you're after because it knows what reports you you were after before. It knows that maybe this one is going to be a mobile application project, 
Um, so you're going to be after a lot of the reports for mobile applications rather than reports for, say, a web development, a, a web site. So you, the, 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 the client is wanting to know more about the difference between iPhone and Android and Windows phones and so forth rather than Internet Explorer and Chrome um, in terms of browser stats. So I do think... and. and you know, statistics is another thing, another area that's going to improve with artificial intelligence as well. Um, and also on-demand services. So all of the, you know, Google Docs, all of the, 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 the Windows um, Office stuff, that's all going to improve. And I, I think as a web developers, we need to uh, embrace this. There is an area, though, that is quite an interesting area, which I, I, I do think might change, and it's going to be an interesting one if it does, and that is search. Because, um, I mean, ages ago, ages and ages ago, back in the noughties, um, when we were developing websites, there were ways that you could sort of hack around and, and improve your search rankings more than perhaps you should do. Um, because there were things that you could do in order to game the system, right? So one thing I remember doing is putting in a H H1 tag right at the top, right at the top, and making it invisible, and just filling it full of tags and and terms that are going to be searched for, the key phrases. And Google would see that and go, yeah, okay, so that's 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 um, that means something, right? That means something. So that's that's because it was basically it was text based there was there was less emphasis on the actual content there was more emphasis on what the text text was and and uh, h1 tag right at the top that was the first thing it saw so you could kind of game the thing you can't do that anymore obviously uh, because they've evolved and of ken it's evolved into mobile right so mo it's mobile first which has taken everything by storm right maybe the next iteration is artificial intelligence Maybe the next thing is how easy is it for Google to find your um, your content on any device? It doesn't have to be mobile. It doesn't have to be desktop. It could be speech, right? It could be uh, just asking Google Assistant. And I think this might change the way we approach building a website. Maybe we're going to be in in I don't know I, I I don't want to put a time on it but I don't know let's say five years for now let's say in five years time maybe are we going to be more interested in developing a website that is more geared towards artificial intelligence than it is a desktop device and if that is the case then that throws so much things in the mix you know how how are we going to be developing our websites to be tailored towards you know, a robot that is constantly learning. And yes, as it's learning, we'll be able to game it. Sure. Yeah, of course we will be able to. We'll be able to discover what it is that it's trying to look for. But then it will evolve and the algorithm will change and so forth. And so this cat and mouse game will, will constantly be played. But my point is that I think artificial intelligence is going to hit and it's going to hit both in a huge way especially with search, but it's also going to hit in the, in, the, in the small ways as well. So the little things that you do. So just talking to a, a customer a rep on a, a chat, do you, uh, do you really think you're talking to a human being or do you think you're actually talking to a robot which has been trained in responses to your questions? That kind of thing. And I, and I think that's quite an interesting shift if you will for us web developers and how we're going to be making those uh applications and yeah i'm i'm really i'm really excited so yeah i think in the next few years it's going to be it's going to be an interesting ride it's going to be an interesting ride be interested to hear what you guys think if you think that i'm just talking complete rubbish and artificial intelligence will just not happen uh but or if you agree do let me know put the comments in the comment section below and uh, I'll be interested to hear what your thoughts are. But uh, once again, happy coding, everyone. And I will speak to you again soon. Cheers. Bye.